eight hours after class preparation as medical students, 18 hour work shifts as junior doctors. And it doesn't even get better after residency. For then, we're either clawing our way up into our own establishment or setting up our own establishment, both of which are literal time black holes. Doctors are forever racing against time, both for themselves and for the patients they're trying to cure. As per rule, patients demand the best possible treatment in the shortest length of time. We can't blame them entirely though. For instance, patients in India get an average consultancy time of 120 seconds with their doctor. Patients in the UK public healthcare system often find themselves on perennial waiting lists. One in 14 patients in the UK are on that list. And then we've got the newspapers and the social media outlets, which are forever dredging up stories of how patients are receiving the wrong treatment due to inept doctors. However, what the media, the movie makers, and the general public itself don't realize is this, that long waiting times and waiting lists are a projection of systems on the strain and doctors are being unfairly blamed for the state of issues. If medicine was considered a, a profession rather than a vocation, if doctors were forced to meet due targets and numbers, then it is but natural to have more patients squeezed into one slot, ergo less consultancy times. And of course, if doctors are weighed down by clunky paperwork and unnecessary bureaucracy, then they're going to have less time for patient care, right? And the outcome? Longer waiting lists. Medicine, in essence, is once limited, yet driven by time. And currently, doctors are functioning under a severe ration of this essential commodity. So please, folks, give us some more time. Now, the final course, well, I'll call it dessert. They're nice to have things in life. Doctors would really, really like to have more money, just like the rest of us, right? Honestly, though we all know that doctors' salaries are through the stratosphere. Doctors in the US have their own private jets and yachts. Doctors in the UK often have a knighthood to their name. And while doctors in India don't usually have a knighthood, they do have posh clinics and often intermingle with Bollywood celebrities. However, this is the upper end of a very, very, very diverse spectrum. These are doctors who've either spent decades practicing medicine or who have been smart enough to jump on the Hollywood talk show bandwagon. I'm talking to you, Dr. Oz. The middle, uh, the mid spectrum consists of doctors who earn a stable living while working insane amounts of hours. And at the very, very bottom, the poor junior doctors who barely earn anything at all. They work for about 15 hours a day and spend the rest dreaming, no, having nightmares, sorry, about loan foreclosures. So this, my friends, is an honest, unbiased, dietic analysis of the medical profession. And yes, I know that we're a service. I understand the, I understand the uh, vocation, the passion, the mission to serve without discrimination and without any hopes of remuneration. But sadly, these lofty ideals are not enough to justify the three million dirham loan, the backbreaking hours, and the sheer mental stress of the, of the profession. Doctors do need more respect. They're forever waging a primordial war against death. They do need more trust. Not all of them are idiots downplaying Dr. Google's Cassandra like croaking. They do need more time. Time for themselves and time for the patients they're trying to cure. And yes, they need a pay scale which justifies their efforts. Doctors demanding this four course meal are not acting in a militant way as accused by some fire-branding politicians in the, U in the UK. Doctors